Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much for your interest. Uh, our Chief Product Officer, Nico Breidenbach, who had to um, attend the um, speak, unfortunately can't make it today. So I will try my best in his place. Today, we want to look into the transformative forces that are driving the industry towards a richer and uh, HCP customer experience. So on a, on a note, on the previous discussion, that was really great. It um, really focused on consent, which is one of the key issues and key cornerstones of transforming the customer experience. <clears throat> we'll start with the things that are dealing today. The whole industry, um, most likely also your company, is trying to push towards the omnichannel strategy. But let's have a look about how fast this is really happening. Face-to-face -face was the dominant interaction point for many decades before multi-channel really started. Nowadays, some companies are still struggling with this multi-channel execution, whilst others are really pushing ahead at an incredible speed to use omnichannel approaches and transform their organizations. As you all know, COVID-19, of course, acted as an accelerator for this digital transformation. Suddenly, the reps grounded and the only available channels were 100% digital. This is where many companies realized that they actually didn't really know their customers and they felt the limitations of their multi-channel one-size-fits-all content approach. This is when companies looked in the consumer industry for inspiration. But before we continue, I would just like to bring up the difference from multi-channel to omni-channel in a very, very boiled down definition, the way we see it. So when you communicate with an HCP, multi-channel is the same message through different channels. Maybe you're going to try to get the timing right and the channel selection is maybe the best you can do to get to some excellence, but it's all push base. Omnichannel is a very different animal in this respect. You're trying to get different messages through different channels coupled with a much finer segmentation of your HCPs and especially trying to get an engagement. So getting a pull effect from your audience, from your HCPs. Let's look at the consumer industry. Um, I'd like to point out three things that are really interesting that you can put into the pharma industry to see how this experience has been optimized and can be optimized also for the pharma industry. First of all, profiling personas. As you know, as a consumer, our behavior is constantly tracked and our preference also constantly change and digitization makes that easy. For example, we are rating our experience when we shop, when we buy a product, when we are tracked through websites all the time, and you know that because of the cookies, I hate them more than ever, and before they were not as bad, but today they're really horrible, and how much time you spend on a specific page, which links you click. The result is that companies can have a very tailored profile of us as consumers. So profiling and personas is one of the important factors when optimizing the customer experience. The other one is the experience of the product itself or of whatever you want to give to a consumer. I don't know when you last opened an, or unpacked an Apple product. It's not the product itself. It's not only the iPhone or the iPad or a PC or whatever you buy, which is interesting. It's the whole experience across getting information, purchasing it, delivering it, unpacking it, switching it on, and using it, all of that is the actual experience. And if you look at what detail level each step is being done, it's really incredible. Then you've got another place in the consumer industry, the tools. For that, I mean actually the apps, not only the tools. They call them apps. In 207, 210, do you remember how your user interfaces of your phone used to be before that? Do you remember what happened? That's when we were confronted with apps. And that's where consumerization in the business world around 2015 started to be a term used to show how the level of sophistication of apps can be brought into the business world. This is where the B2B software industry also started to build business applications similar to those in the consumer industry. So all in all, we have changed how we rate our experience during business reinteractions. We're constantly using our consumer-grade experience and measuring against it. 
and HCPs are fundamentally consumers. They expect the same level of differentiation, experience, and tools when engaging with pharma companies. Therefore, to really increase your customer experience, you need to understand who they really are, how they think, collect and analyze their feedback across all your touch points, and derive activities to improve their experience with you. You need to understand what your customers are expecting from you, and yes, your customers are a lot more multifaceted than you really think and the way you have been segmenting them until now. Of course, we have been seeing this already happening at some pharma companies. They're increasingly understanding how important it is to optimize that experience. Many of them, for example, systematically collect the feedback of the HCPs like email clicks. They profile the customers through their field force and put it in relation to, for example, attended online events by these HCPs with their goal of automating responses or at least have recommendations on which content to put through the next touch point. As we've seen in the previous session, and I want to stress that point, which is really, really important, content is key. Without it, you won't be able to move forward into transforming your organization towards omnichannel. So what needs to be done to support individualized customer journeys? Of course, you've got all your data. You need somehow to integrate that data, but it is much, much bigger a task than on a technical point. You have to come up with an omnichannel strategy. You have to overcome resistance at different levels within your organization, and you have to implement that successfully to avoid a setback and lose really precious time in an avoidable transformation process. So change management of your workforce is probably the biggest challenge. HCPs need to be understood as multifaceted individuals by everybody in the organization, marketing, field force, market access, everybody. And your processes need to be reviewed and adapted, which I think when you look at the pharma industry is pretty easy because you've done it a lot of times. And the data needs to be collected, restructured and exposed at the right time at the right place. But without new and better tools, it won't really work. So I would like to take one example. Um, let's take remote interaction and go through what is possible today in a remote interaction room to have a better engagement. First of all, it doesn't have anything to do with video tools. Uh, video tools are great. I love FaceTime, for example, when I talk a lot with my family. But for example, video tools today have one huge limitation, which is purely screen sharing. In the business world, it really falls short of what is needed and what is possible. The rep sees all the relevant information in one place. We call that the engagement place, the room. And this is where the information is always present for the rep to be able to engage and to act on that information. For example, then it can pick a process, which process to use while still being compliant, for example, by avoiding screen sharing. And the supported processes today in these typical remote interaction tools should be, yes, e-detailing without screen sharing, being able to collect samples, being able to collect consent, being able to capture offers, and a lot more processes. So everything you've been doing face-to-face -face has to be able to be done in a remote interaction session. So the rep can ask, for example, in HTTP during the session, for example, to ask if it's interested in a certain specific topic and offer that through a link directly during the remote interaction session. So that, for example, she can immediately act upon that offer, which is different than sending a link. Ultimately, you have to look at it from an HCP's perspective. She's a consumer who wants to engage, who wants an immersive experience. So let us continue with that example of remote interaction. What can you expect today from a platform that supports real remote interaction? As I said before, all of the HCP CRM data and activities are visible to the organizer during the interaction. And if you've got maybe an MSL together with a rep, both of them see exactly the same information. Yes, without having to switch back and forth between tools. And automatically capture all your activity inside the CRM without having to rekey it in or, or do anything. Your sample request, your content, your media, everything in there. 
you can not only execute industry specific processes, but you can also adapt into your needs. After all, you have to be also secure and compliant. And at the end, your HCP after the call wants maybe to access that information plus other services from your company. So since you cannot predict the future, all of that has to be possible and you have to have an easy way to extend that capability because you don't know where your HCP is going to move. So in summary, the execution of an omnichannel strategy, you need to have a vision where you want to go in the next three to five years with your organization, have a good blueprint of what omnichannel is for you and your organization, how to achieve it, have a real strong change management process in place, a consent or opt-in strategy, and better suited tools to collect the consent, create multifaceted profiles through a systematic tracking of preferences and HCP reactions to act upon, and to interact and really engage with your customers. So thank you very much. I hope I could give you some food for thought. Please feel free to reach me with your questions, and I'll be really happy to compile a short Q&A and add it to the presentation. So again, thank you for your interest and stay healthy.